them they disintegrate on the way and they are absorbed by the female genital tract mucosa. Is that right? Am I? They know which like flow to go into, right? No, actually, look, life is a lot about chances. <laughs> they go to both sides. Some go here, some go there. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, it is not like that. There's no red light there that you don't go here and <laughs> green light for this area. No. Actually, some sperms go in that direction, others go to this direction. They only go under one condition to one fallopian tube. What is that condition? When there's only one fallopian tube. And many females will remove one fallopian tube. Isn't it? Due to some complications. Otherwise, they love to go into both. So some troops go into this way and other troops go to this way. And someone, uh, okay, they have to find eventually where is the ovum. Is that right? Clear? Because they don't know. While they're moving here, they don't know where ovum is present on which side. Even many times, ovum is not there. Right? Anyway. So, well, once they have moved here, once they are passing through this uh, cavity and through this area, contractions of uterine smooth muscles and fallopian tube smooth muscles also have. So, it's a double action. You know, mutual... Uh, interaction between male and female for the mutual benefits that sperm is contributing its motile motility and female is contributing by contractility of its hollow viscous uterine and fallopian tube right both these things promote and facilitate the movement of the or passage of the or, or travel of the sperm sperm the bit intelligent you know they bring with themselves in the semen prostaglandins in the semen non, not only there is fructose there is also prosta glandins so some prostaglandins which are moving up they also in, increase the or in, stimulate the contractions of the uterine tube is that right is that right so this these were something about the movement of the sperm the how sperms are passing through. Important point to remember that in the vagina, there's acidic fluid, they move slowly. In the uterine cavity and fallopian tube, they become fast. Number two, another important, very important point. You know, some of the few lucky which reach here, you know what happened to them? Most of them who reach here, of course, a small percentage reaches. Once they reach here, they stop there. Now, you know fertilization occur here, but most of them stop there. It means there will be something which will restart them and then they will move there. Who will restart them? Yes. Especially if ovum comes, of course it is having some follicular cells around it which are called corona radiata cells. If it really comes, they release ovum plus its friends. Its friends are? coronary radiata cells, all of them release chemo attractants, like a good scent attracting the sperms, please come. So what happened? Ovum itself does not move much. It sits here and then ovum plus its coronary radiata cells, they are releasing chemical substances which are chemo attractant. And once they are released, if ovum is there, they can sense the presence of those substances and then rapidly restart the movement and approach to the site of fertilization. Is it clear? Again, movement of the sperm by multiple things which facilitate the movement of sperms. Number one was its own tail movement. Number two, contractions. And this little favor also done by the cilia of the what? Mucosal cells. Right? They also assist in the movement of sperm. Right? But they slow down at the uterine part of or slow down at the isthmus and if ovulation occur and product of ovulation that is secondary oocyte along with its which cells corona radiata cells they release chemoattractive substances and they become activated and they rush towards the ovum is that right now before the fertilization really occurs before the fertilization really occur I mean before the uh, ovum and the sperm really fuse, sperm has to undergo two important changes. Is that right? One 
process is called capacitation capacitation reaction and other process is called acrosome reaction acrosome reaction we'll discuss both of them and you must know the difference of them sperm have to pass through capacitation reaction and acrosomal reaction before sperm is capable of fusing with the ovum is that right now what is capacitation reaction capacitation is special type of conditioning of sperm within the female reproductive tract and it takes about 7 hours even the fastest sperm may take 5 minutes to reach here but it cannot fertilize immediately is that right what you remember was 7 hours that was not the travel time that is the capacitation time what is capacitation capacitation is yes capacitation is special type of conditioning of the sperm when it is present within the female reproductive tract what is that special change let me tell you let's suppose here is sperm right it's moving on the way actually number one you have to remember on the head side it has a double membrane do you know that this is called plasma membrane or the cell membrane of the sperm and there is a special membrane here which is called acrosomal membrane it is a double membrane here then it has lot of glycoproteins there glycoprotein deposited on its head so it has to wash its head before it, it is greeted by the ovum so head washing is called capacitation because its head is loaded with lot of glycoproteins like substances and until these glycoproteins are present over there until they are not washed away the sperm should be sad because it cannot because it cannot fertilize the ovum the dirty head <laughs> isn't it so who will wash its head yeah of course now she owns the sperm so she has to wash the <laughs> its head is that right it's now your personal matter so what really happens that head of this will interact with the mucosa lining of the fallopian tube and maybe uterine cavity and mucosa lining of the uterine cavity and fallopian tube and there are enzymes from there and cilia which wash its head and enzymes digest away these glycoproteins and once these glycoproteins are removed right now sperm is happy because yeah because now it is capacitated it has developed the capacity to fertilize the ovum is that right now why this point is important and this capacitation process take about seven seven hours in the female reproductive tract why it is so important to mention because when we try to do fertilization in vitro in the laboratory we put the ovum and put the freshly produced sperm on that freshly produced sperms or, uh, or rather specially released sperm in the semen uh, cannot fertilize the ovum and doctors were really surprised how in the female genital tract or reproductive tract sperms can fertilize the ovum and when we put the both things in the petri dish the, uh, they don't work well so later on so they came to know that there is conditioning of the sperm I think head conditioning right uh, within the female reproductive tract is that right and then they become really wise and now they have some materials in the laboratory that freshly ejaculated semen they put into that uh, material and that material will wash away the glycoproteins from the head of the acros acrosomal region of the sperm and after that uh, sperms can do successfully fertilization in vitro is that right am I clear so this is one point that it has to undergo capacitation reaction right and this occurs mostly in the uterine tube by the interaction between the sperm and the mucosal surface of the tube these are glycoproteins there are glycoproteins here and plus some seminal plasma proteins you know some seminal gland uh, product both of them may be there glycoproteins or seminal plasma proteins all of them need to be washed away or removed right only capacitated sperms can pass through corona radiata 